Hey, San Antonio, this is Rob for the Metal Orcs, and tonight I am at the back room to welcome legendary thrash man out of New York City. Yes, I have with me the man, Danny Lilker of Nuclear Assault. How are you doing, Dan? All right, and it's good to be the man. <laughs> it's good to have you back in these parts, man. It's been uh, a while since you have been here, but uh, tell us a little bit about um, uh, your reunion with Nuclear Assault and, and how it all got back together. Well... See, uh, there's this band in New Hampshire called Candy Striper Death Orgy, and their guitar player, Eric, is the world's biggest nuclear assault fan. So all the time in between all these years when I was playing with Brutal Truth and then doing the SOD reformation and all that, he would call every couple of years or email and go, Hey, Dan, how you doing? Yo, it's Eric. Did you ever think about doing another show? And I'd be like, Nah, man, I'm too busy. And then finally, around last winter, I wasn't too busy anymore. And I said, Sure, that sounds like fun. Let's play that. He said, do you want to play the New Jersey Metal Fest? I said, sure, what the fuck? And it kind of started from there. Once people realized we were doing shows, offers came in. Next thing you know, uh, Tim from Screaming Ferret said, you know, we'd like to record this one show you're doing in Massachusetts for a live album. So everything kind of got rolling again. So here we are. Except Anthony is no longer with us. He, his last show was the Wacken Festival we did in Germany last August, and now we have a new guitar player, Eric, who's right behind your camera, man, smoking pot. <laughs> and, and let's talk a little bit about what you just referenced. Um, you guys got a new disc coming out, the live record, all live again on, on Screaming Ferret Records. Tell us a little bit about that disc, and uh, why did you want to put out the, the live record first before actually some new material? It's from a show we did last May in Attleboro, Massachusetts. And the reason we wanted to put out a live album first is because it would come out a lot quicker than having to uh, wait for to write arrange, record, find a label, and do a studio record. I think it's my hit. <laughs> That's why we did a live album first. Okay. And uh, obviously you guys are playing a lot of the old classics uh, that, uh, that a lot of the fans want to hear. All we're playing is the old stuff. We don't have any new stuff arranged yet. I'm stoned. <laughs> but uh, definitely playing all like play, Critical Mass, all those kick-ass jams. Yeah, we're going to play a lot of stuff off the, everything from Game Over to the Handle with Care era. And what about uh, new work? I know that uh, you guys are going to eventually put out a new record. Yeah, John and I have been writing. We have eight to ten songs, but we haven't had the chance to jam them all together because we all live in different areas of the country right now. Uh, Glenn lives in Florida now, John's still in New York, and I moved to Rochester, New York, where Eric lives. So uh, we don't get a chance to jam like we all can meet up and practice every night, like a lot of bands. So uh, it's going to be a slower process. When do you anticipate the, the new release to be out, and will, it, will the new release also be on Screaming Ferret? It's really hard to say when it would be out, because uh, we still have to jam the songs. It would be at least a year. And as far as what label it's going to be on, it is a possibility it could be on Screaming Ferret, because they're doing a good job at the live album. But uh, nothing's written in stone, and we might have other options we might pursue can't say for sure and it, it's a great thing like I said to see you guys in these parts again you guys have been touring since the beginning of of the month and what is what does the rest of the touring schedule look like for nuclear assault uh, in 2003 after we finish this little thing which ends in a week and a half in Seattle we're going to uh, do a few regional shows where we're from in the East Coast a couple of weekends we're going to be doing in February and March then we're going to Europe in April to be part of the No Mercy Festival with Marduk and Testament and Obituary and a shitload of other bands and uh, after that, I'm not sure. We have plans, I think, the first week of July to do some European festivals again, but these are the big ones, the 40,000 ones. And uh, that's all I know right now. I guess. And, and Dan, for shows like mine, uh, video is still important, man. And you guys, uh, will you guys do any video, you think, in the future? Any maybe live video or DVD work uh, for the band? We have footage of a show we did at CBGB's last April. Or was it May? that the guy's editing and uh, uh, yeah that could be something as far as doing a studio video like your brainwashing critical masses I'm not sure right now it's really too far off in the future we don't even know what label it's going to be on if we could could have the budget to do that that would be great because we were never all about MTV anyway you know we were more about the underground stuff like your show right. and and as of as of late in, in the new millennium, you know, people would say that heavy music's coming back, the wave is coming back, 
and some would say that's the reason for a lot of these reunions of some of these uh, seminal bands. Would you agree with that, Dan, about the, the bands uh, getting back together because heavy music is coming back? Well, it might be coincidental that a lot of bands are reforming, but uh, I think people just uh, want to hear some heavy shit again. I'm tired of rap metal, what can I tell you? <laughs> That shit sucks. And what about anything else on your plate, Danny? Any any other things? I mean, uh, will you continue to have a future with SOD or any Brutal Truth or anything else? Nah, the only thing I'm doing besides this is The Ravenous, which is the gory death metal band I play in. And we're going to have our new album out on Southern Lord Records, a new full length in a couple of months. It should be called Blood Delirium. That's all everything else I'm doing at the moment. And, and as you, we talk about the, the road work again, what's the reception like, Ben? I mean, uh, people are definitely coming out to support you guys and definitely uh, wanting to hear some of those old tunes and live again. Absolutely. We're getting a lot of the old heads that came out in the old days. And, you know, then you're also you're getting younger people that might have got turned on to us, but it was too late to go see us, and now they're psyched. You know, like 25-year-old kids that were like 12 when we first toured. Right. And now they're like, oh, shit, I can see Nuclear Assault. Awesome. So people are definitely really psyched. Cool. Any last words, Danny, for the people out there in San Antonio, man? Anything that we miss or should cover? Uh, just look out eventually for a new record. We want to thank everyone from the bottom of our hearts for coming out and supporting us when we're doing this again. If it wasn't for those fuckers, you know, we'd have to get jobs. <laughs> Thanks, man, for your time this evening. Remember San Antonio, the man, Danny Luker, from Nuclear Assault and the latest Alive Again is out there. Be sure to look for it when you're at the record store.